Hello to everyone out there. It's Makeda Valletta, also known as the Body Scientist and the Renaissance Amazon. And in case you don't know me, um, I have a background in exercise and sports science and nutrition science and biotechnology. Okay, so I'm a body science nerd. And I have committed my life to studying all of the ways that we can take our body to its highest level. And I'm really uh, based in prevention, okay? Preventing being sick, okay? And today, I already did a video two days ago about the coronavirus um, facts and prevention. But I, me and my science self and my health obsessed self, um, I've been doing a lot of research since then. And there's more that I want to share. And because it's such a big deal and it's a pandemic, global pandemic, I am posting this video on both of my YouTube pages. So this video will be on my YouTube page, The Body Scientist 81, and my YouTube page, The Renaissance Amazon. Um, right now, I'm live on my IG page, The Renaissance Amazon. Um, and so for those of you who are not familiar with me, um, I am very serious about what I do and about um, research, about reading good, you know, research, dissecting research. A lot of people just blindly believe things. They don't read research. They don't know how to read research. And this is how brainwashing happens. And this is how false information is spread, okay? So, um, also, I want to show you... and. and Along the lines of the fact that I'm very much into research, there's this book that I have, right? This book is called um, The New Killer Diseases. You see this? The New Killer Diseases. All right? I've had this book for over a decade, okay? This book says, Why SARS, West Nile, Ebola, and Mad Cow are just the beginning, Okay? Why SARS, West Now, Ebola, and Mad Cow are just the, are only the beginning. The new killer diseases. How the alarming evolution of mutant germs. What does this say? Something. I'm making a sale or some shit, right? Here you see. So I've had this book for over a decade. Now let me read the, let's read what it says in the back. On the back it says, the deadly new disease, SARS, is a shocking wake-up call about the alarming threat of rapidly mutating killer germs. A threat that may be as challenging as any of the human species has ever confronted. A threat that may be as challenging as any the human species has confronted. All around us, viruses, bacteria are evolving new killer traits. Some bacteria have even begun swapping their most deadly genes with one another. Old demons that the Western world thought it had eradicated, such as a plague or back, and stealth viruses, including herpes and hepatitis, are silently slipping into our cells and multiplying, then lying dormant, tricking our immune systems into overlooking them only to burst forth periodically, causing fatal illnesses such as cancer and perhaps even heart disease. Tens of thousands of Americans die annually from infectious diseases. Millions die worldwide. Unfortunately, we have developed vaccines for only a handful of them, and more and more of our drugs are becoming outmatched. Old organisms like Staphylococcus and the bacteria that cause tuberculosis which we thought we had under control, are rapidly evolving to resist our drugs. So effectively that microbiologists now talk about the possibility of a post-antibiotic era when these overprescribed drugs no longer work at all. And entirely new forms of pathogens like prions behind mad cow disease are infiltrating and decimating our brains. Menacing as, bio, as bioterrorism is, the danger from naturally evolving diseases is far greater. The sheer number of pathogens is rising, and their diversity, reproductive vigor, and ability to mutate are daunting. Okay, so this is this book. I've had this book for over a decade, and I have read many books like this. So I, people often hear me talk about infectious disease, how to prevent disease, natural cures for infectious disease. 
And people, and I always tell people, I've been researching this shit for a long time, okay? Um, I've been a science nerd, you know, first I used to want to research the cure for genetic diseases. That When I went to college, that's what I wanted to do. I was a biotechnology major. So I understand a lot about genetics, genetic diseases, infectious diseases, bacteria, and viruses, okay? Sometimes I don't always want to say all the things I know because I don't want anybody coming after me. Because one of the reasons why I, you know, jumped out of being a scientist was because I started to see the politics in science. I always talk about how the graduate program I was in was the only graduate program in the U.S. that didn't take any money from the food industry. So most nutrition, people with degrees in nutrition and dietetics, they have been educated by the food industry, which is why you won't hear a lot of them tell you what I'm telling you. And the doctors have been funded by the drug companies. So there are some doctors who know the truth, but a lot of doctors don't know the truth. A lot of doctors don't fully understand shit and are giving you the wrong information. A lot of scientists, you know, can't speak up about stuff because they end up dead. Um, so there's a lot of politics, right? Now, I definitely recommend going back and looking at the video I did two days ago on my page, The Body Scientist 81, where I'm talking about coronavirus facts and prevention. I'm not going to go through all that again because I already did that. This is more an add-on. And one of the things I was talking about also in videos that I have on probiotics or intestinal dysbiosis, I have a video on strengthening the immune system, another video on probiotics and digestion and immunity. Um, I have videos on taking care of your sexual organs and preventing sexually transmitted diseases. I have a, a video on condoms and how they're not the best way to prevent sexually transmitted diseases. So if you look at all of those videos and put them together, you will learn a lot about just infectious disease and how to prevent them to begin with, okay? Because as you saw, what I read on this in the back of this book is that we have an issue with viruses and bacteria that the drugs don't work on, them, okay? But I, as I've said in previous videos, the drugs can't be, I mean, the, the, the viruses and bacteria have conditions for life. They can't mutate against that. Okay, so if they can't survive in the presence of oxygen, and they're in the presence of oxygen, they will die. They cannot mutate against that. But they can mutate against artificial chemicals and agents. They can mutate very quickly, and you, you create super strains, okay? Also, I also explained several times that hand sanitizer, not only does it, not only does hand sanitizer, antibacterial soap, and antibiotics completely kill your immune system, so it's counterproductive. I would rather not wash my hands than to use antibacterial soap, okay? Because it kills all the good bacteria, all the bacteria, and the good bacteria are critical for preventing infectious disease. On our skin, our skin is a part of our immune system. I always say that, right? And we're, we're only as strong as our weakest link. Our skin is a part of our immune system. It, it, it protects us from what comes in out of our body, the things being able to come in. So if you have cuts and abrasions, then viruses and bacteria can enter your body, okay? Um, and, you know, like our, our, we have we have phospholipid bilayers, fat bilayers and cholesterol that keep our skin and our cells waterproof, okay? So this is very important. Um, but my mom had just sent me a text message because I, I, you know, with my parents, I'm just making sure, like my mom is 70, my dad is 77. Neither one of them have any, like, real health problems. But both of them have low vitamin D, like most people have low vitamin D. Get your vitamin D checked. On my Patreon page that I'm launching this week, um, I, I plan on launching it tomorrow. I will be doing videos on how to know about what your vitamin D level should be, how to understand vitamin D tests. So I'll be doing more detailed scientific videos on my Patreon page. Um, so you can learn a lot more in depth there, or you can just do your own research and spend hours researching and find what you find. But vitamin D is critically important, critically important. That and probiotics, like two of the most important things when it comes to preventing infections. And vitamin D is especially linked to preventing upper respiratory tract infections. So I had both of my parents taking cod liver oil. I wanted them to take that before this whole outbreak. And probiotics, okay? I also take probiotics and cod liver oil. But the older you get, the harder it is for your body to make vitamin D, the more you need vitamin D. Um, and so older people and people with compromised immune systems do need to be extra careful and definitely 
need to make sure that they get adequate vitamin D. High doses of fermented cod liver oil, high doses of probiotics, you know, consuming things like drinking green tea and echinacea, um, putting olive leaf extract or oregano, oil of oregano in your tea, stuff like that, okay? Um, now, my mom had just sent me something telling me that like 200 people died in Italy over the past 24 hours. Now, the thing about the deaths from coronavirus is that they are mostly elderly people with compromised immune systems, elderly people who already had health complications. Italy apparently has more elderly people. It has, this is the, 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 the they have the second largest population of elderly people is Italy after Japan, okay? So there's a large number of, large number of um, uh, uh, elderly people in Italy. And most of the people who are dying from coronavirus worldwide are elderly. But Italy has a huge um, elderly population and they are very have a very social culture. So that is one of the reasons why the virus spread so quickly in Italy and has killed so many people. And it was undetected it was already there and nobody knew about it for a while. Now, the thing in quarantine, quarantines don't work. And I have watched other scientists talk about this, how quarantines do not work because, um, and I know this, because you can't stop microorganisms from spreading. We cannot stop bacteria and viruses from spreading around. There's no 100% foolproof, foolproof way. And this is what I, when I talk about safe sex, I always tell people it starts with you, your microbiome, with all infectious disease, whether it be from sex, from food, from coughing, uh, no matter what it's from, okay? And I, whenever I would tell people why it's important to take probiotics, I would always say we, we can always be exposed to infectious disease. You cannot see bacteria and viruses. And I always use tuberculosis as an example. Like if somebody spits on the floor and they have tuberculosis and you walk by it and you breathe that, you could get tuberculosis. Now the thing about the coronavirus is that, number one, it's not a new virus, okay? It's a mutation, which is what this book is talking about, mutations. So when people think that, all oh, this has to do, the government is trying to do this, this, and that, no, 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 no. Anybody who understands science and has been paying attention to microorganisms for the past 20, 30 years, knows that there's a problem on the planet with infectious organisms, with antibiotic-resistant bacteria, with antiviral-resistant viruses. They know that viruses and bacteria mutate all the time. And we give them reasons to mutate when we try to use these artificial agents, okay? And this is why I feel like, you know, the best prevention is taking care of yourself and your own, your own being, okay? Um, now... The thing about coronavirus is mutation. SARS was a coronavirus. Some some flu viruses are coronaviruses, okay? Um, and I think MERS was also a coronavirus. So we had MERS, we had SARS, we had Ebola. Um, most of these um, uh, viruses that really harm people, they come from animals. Even HIV, they came from chimpanzees or something like that. So a lot of them come from animals into humans, okay? And... There, you know, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't really matter where it came from. Like, some people say it came from somebody eating bats in China, but then other, I've seen other scientists talk about how they felt like it came out of a laboratory, bioterrorism laboratory, and both of those sound, sound like they could be uh, true. Because I also have said this in my previous video, any college student, graduate student has access to all kinds of disease-causing organisms in the laboratory. I used to think this when I was, a, when I was a, um, undergrad. I'd be like, oh, like you're working with stuff that's like a biohazard, and you could easily take it out the lab and put it on somebody and create a big problem, right? Um, so there's lots of diseases that scientists are studying in laboratories that can get out. Um, so I believe that. But also, it's funny because with China, I've been saying for a long time that I don't want anything from China, and I don't trust Chinese people. No offense, okay, because I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about Chinese Americans, okay? Chinese Americans are different. But Chinese people, I don't want anything from China. And I have felt like this for a long time. Don't want anything from China, and I don't trust them. I don't trust the things that they say. I feel like Chinese people will lie to you. And people can say that I'm being racist. This is no. This is true. I even know other Asians. There's a, there's a owner of a Japanese restaurant in Harlem who wrote this long post about Chinese people being unsanitary and all these different issues. And so... Um, 
the thing is, is that I've heard, I've seen, you know, I travel a lot. So I've seen people who, who do YouTube travel blogs who they will say that like in China, people just sneeze out into the open air. And if you flinch, like it's disgusting, they look at you like you're being rude. Like in America, if you sneeze out into open air, you don't cover your mouth. We think, we look at you as being rude. But I read that in China, they look at you as being rude if you flinch because of it. That's nasty to me. I know that in New York, I have seen Chinese people blowing snot rockets out their nose onto the sidewalk, which is fucking disgusting. I think it's nasty just to, to even blow your nose in public, let alone blowing snot rockets on the ground, okay? Spitting on the ground, which a lot of Americans do. I think that's nasty too. But, um, but, but I think spitting on the ground is fucking disgusting, and blowing snot out of your nose is disgusting. Um, and Chinese people do eat all kinds of crazy shit, okay? So I, I'm not, I, I, that's not a far-fetched thing for me, but the thing, I mean, for me to believe. But the thing that people have to understand is that viruses, bacteria will spread. There's no quarantine that has ever worked in life. Every disease that people have tried to quarantine people, it doesn't work, okay? Um, there's a lot of people who have the virus on them that don't know because they don't have any, they don't have any symptoms, and they're passing on to other people. So like I have been telling people for years, if you look at my videos from way back on the way back, for a long time I've been talking about probiotics and why it's so important. Anybody who has been my client can tell you I have lectured them about probiotics and why it is your first line of defense against infectious organisms, why you need to not take antibiotics, why you need to not use antibacterial soap. All those things mess up your, your microbiome. Now another thing, People deciding to use hand sanitizer because of SARS virus doesn't, I mean not SARS, because of Corona, doesn't make any sense. And the reason why is because anti, uh, anti, the hand sanitizer is for bacteria. Coronavirus is a virus. Viruses and bacteria are not the same thing. Bacteria are living organisms that reproduce. Um, uh, viruses are not living organisms, but they do hijack your cells and inject your cells with their DNA or RNA. One thing about coronavirus that makes it a little bit different than other viruses is that it's an RNA virus and not a DNA virus, okay? But it injects its RNA or its DNA into your cell and hijacks the cell and takes over the cell. The cell then becomes, it's like a zombie, okay? So it begins to, to um, the cell begins to create proteins that the DNA from that virus has injected into it. That's how viruses work, okay? And the coronavirus has stuff on it that can, like, once it gets in your skin, can get in the skin and and um, and do all, all that kind of stuff, okay? So um, the thing, though, the SARS virus and, let me see, SARS and MERS are all versions of a coronavirus, right? Now... Um, the difference is, is that coronavirus is spreading a lot faster. It's spreading a lot faster than, um, than, uh, than MERS did and then SARS did. And it's spreading a lot wider, even though the mortality rate is a lot lower. So the mortality rate is a lot lower, but um, it's spreading a lot faster. Now, when you see, and this is the thing, like, unless everyone's going to live in a plastic bubble, we now see that colleges have canceled um, like Harvard University, UCLA told people not to come back to school. Um, you have the NBA canceled the whole season because one person got infected with it. And who knows who else in the NBA has it, right? But who knows how many of us may have the virus on us and don't know. And you're not, be, you're not sick because of it. So if they were actually able to test everybody, what would happen is the mortality rate would actually go down. Because we would find there's way more people who have the virus and than, we, than we actually know who are asymptomatic, don't have any symptoms, don't die from it. So that would mean more infections, less death, means the mortality rate actually goes down even lower. Okay, so I'm saying this to say that this, this virus is highly infectious, but it's not really that dangerous unless it's the elderly, like even kids, which is good. Kids seem to not be um, getting that sick from the virus. It's elderly people. And elderly people who have already compromised immune systems. So if this elderly person is going through chemo, they went through chemo, they are severely diabetic, um, and they have a lot of severe health problems. So like one of the main things, if you have older people in your family, is to make sure that they are getting enough vitamin, that they're getting a lot of vitamin D. And I do not suggest taking vitamin D as a supplement pill, okay? 
I suggest taking cod liver oil, fermented cod liver oil, where vitamin D and vitamin E, I mean vitamin D and vitamin A are in the right balance, and um, and you have the pro uh, anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats, and also if you have access to the sun, if you're somebody that's in a warmer climate, go out into the sun. Because another thing, another thing about um, about quarantines is that, and I was just listening to a science scientist talk about this, but I know this to be true too. Is that staying inside, okay? Staying inside actually helps the virus to replicate and spread, okay? It actually makes it more powerful. And you not being out in the sun, the sun, besides its effect, besides its vitamin D effect on us, it plays a role with our immune system. This is why we see more illnesses in the wintertime when people are inside, okay? So being inside is not a way to stop the spread and actually decreases your immune system. And also with the coronavirus, First, they were saying that it's spread by droplets of spit, which is like so funny because I'm already some. Me being a New Yorker, I don't like people talking too goddamn close to me. I don't even like people touching me when they talk, and I definitely don't like people talking. Like when I'm eating, I don't like having conversations. I don't like people talking to me with my food because a lot of people have stuff flying out their mouth. So I've already felt that way, right? And I'm already. I already don't like shaking people's hands. I think that's nasty. There's never once, it's never once in my life that I've shook somebody's hand and their hand didn't feel gritty. So I don't like any of that. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? Oh, they, they, with the coronavirus, they're now saying that um, they think it's airborne, like tuberculosis. So if it's airborne, that means just floating around in the air. You don't even have to touch anybody, you know what I'm saying? Just breathe, you know? Or somebody was right here, you know, a minute ago coughing in the air, and then um, they walked away, and now you come and breathe, and you breathe that in, Okay. So this goes back to what I have been telling people for years, okay? Some people have been following me since MySpace days, which is like back in 2007. For years, I have been one of the, uh, talking about, I mean, one of, sorry, I have so many things I want to say. But for years, I have been talking about the importance of probiotics, okay? Probiotics, probiotics, probiotics. If you are not eating fermented foods every day, taking a high dosage of probiotics, and you're not conscious of that, you probably have intestinal dysbiosis and are at risk for all kinds of infections. Okay, so no matter what kind of infection it is that you want to prevent, whether it's a vaginal infection, a penile infection, an ass infection, a throat infection, a toe infection, a scalp infection, it all has to do with your microbiome. Period, point blank. I cannot stress that enough. And what we're learning with this, what we're seeing, well, I already knew this, but what the public, you know, what some of you may become aware of with this virus is that there's all kinds of viruses and bacteria around us that can make us sick. So we don't just live life, you know, neutral and we don't play a role and just hope that we don't get sick. Now, there's things that you do to build up your immunity, just like you have countries that build up their fucking uh, armies and, and shit. You have to think of your body as the same way. We have armies. We have militaries. It's called a microbiome. It's in our gut. It's on our skin. In our vaginal canal. Okay? Um, also, let me see. Hold on. Let me just make sure I say everything I need to say that I want to say. Um, yeah, and as I said, that SARS is a form of the coronavirus. Um... And it originated in China in 2002. And SARS reached 29 countries and killed 800 people, but the coronavirus has already reached 71 countries and has killed over 3,100 people, okay? So it is a, a widely, rapidly spreading um, virus. Um, and again, go back and look at the video um, that I did on coronavirus prevention and masks because I was trying to explain to you that wearing masks is not going to help. You know, hand sanitizer is not going to help. It's actually going to make it worse. Okay, let's just remember again, the hand sanitizer is for bacteria, not viruses. And it kills all the good bacteria on your skin, which is your primary defense against infectious organisms. And it causes that bacteria to mutate, thus contributing to super strains of bacteria that's resistant to everything. But bacteria and viruses cannot mutate. Like, every, every organism has... a uh, uh, requirements for life, right? So humans, we need a certain percentage of oxygen. We can't mutate to no longer need oxygen. We need oxygen. Same thing is true with bacteria and viruses. Their requirements for life, that shit stays consistent. So, 
if you have a bacteria that can't stand oxygen, they can't mutate to that. So if you put high, expose it to hydrogen and peroxide, which is H2O2, I mean H2O2, it will kill that bacteria that can't survive in the presence of oxygen. It can't mutate to that, but it can mutate against artificial chemical um, antibacterials. And of course, who makes money off of selling those things? Nobody wants to tell you that you need to take probiotics. Nobody wants to tell you to stop eating pasteurized stuff. Like I consume raw milk, I consume raw cream, raw uh, kefir. All those have probiotics. And people are consuming kimchi, Haitian pickle, you know, like fermented foods and bacteria. Nobody is telling you that. Instead, they're like the vaccine, the vaccine. It takes years to develop vaccines. Plus, one of the issues with vaccines is that it only protects you against that one strain. There are many different strains of the flu. There are many different strains of coronavirus and every other virus and blah, blah, blah. We see how popular the herpes virus is. The herpes virus is like one of the most popular viruses in the, in the world. It seems like most people on the planet have the herpes virus. A lot of people have the herpes virus and don't even know it. This is because viruses can be dormant in our system, okay, and they can be reactivated, which is also what I read on the back of this book. The new killer diseases, okay? If you, if you join this late, go back and listen to the beginning of the talk. But this book talks about that, which is more of a threat than bioterrorism. I've talked about bioterrorism too, especially having a background in biotechnology and food science. I've talked about that in other videos, how easy bioterrorism is with our food system and everything else. But this book is saying mutations are even more of a threat than bioterrorism. Mutations always happen. So a lot of people think, oh, the government is a conspiracy and they want to distract us from the election. No. This is normal. Bacteria and viruses mutate all the time. And in the 90s, I predicted some shit like this happening. And this is also the analogy I would use when I talked about condoms. I'm like, condoms are not the... If you really want to be safe in preventing infectious disease during sex and you just eat whatever... You know, you're not conscious of your microbiome and you think that just putting on a piece of plastic is going to protect you. No, you know, that's not it. You know, that's not it. There's more than that. Because just like with, with coronavirus, stuff can go around the mask and this way and that way. Same thing is true with other infectious organisms. So if you're having sex and the condom stops right here, but you have vaginal fluid all right here and on your face, because I don't know anybody who's ever used a dental dam when they have sex, I mean, when they go down on a woman, so you're doing all of that, and you think that just by putting plastic right here is going to stop something. Like, there's a such thing as microbiomes, okay? Microbiomes are your first, your microbiome, you having a lot of good bacteria, oxygen-producing bacteria in your gut, you staying away from antibacterial soaps and antibiotics. Every time you take around the antibiotics, it greatly messes up your microbiome. So you have to go even harder to replenish that. We get inoculated with our microbiomes from our mother when we're born vaginally. So if you're born by C-section, you're already not getting that. And then when we're breastfed. So if you have babies who were not born vaginally and were not breastfed, they come into this world severely depleted of a protective microbiome. We also get our microbiomes from our mother. So if your mother didn't have the best microbiome, then you won't either. So there's a lot of things that go into this. Okay, and I will get more into a lot of that stuff on my Patreon page. I, I, do, I do this kind of work with clients, but I'll get more in depth uh, for how you can know how to assess yourself and what to do on my Patreon page. Um, I think that's everything I needed to say about this virus. Definitely go back and look at my other video that I did a couple days ago, um, Coronavirus uh, Facts and Prevention, okay? Um, and if you have older people in your family, because I know I'm definitely thankful for what I know about health, uh, because the people around me will always be good. And um, my mom actually just called me when I first started this video to tell me, like, I had already had her taking olive oil, but um, she hadn't been taking it, so she started taking it again. And she just called me to tell me, I feel so much better that I've been taking this. Not that she was even sick, but she feels even better, because that vitamin D is critical. Critical, okay? When it comes to preventing infections, upper respiratory tract infections, and a lot of people have vitamin D deficiencies. And with elderly people, they have a way harder time making vitamin D. So this is one critical thing to look at. And these, these are not the things that people are being told. All they're being told is wash your hands and stay inside. That's not going to stop a pandemic. You know, you wash your hands, great. 
But what if the shit's on your arm? What if it's on your foot? <laughs> and then you touch somebody else with your foot. Or you brush somebody else with your arm. Like, it's not just about the hands, you know? So what, what we're being told is, is very minimal. And Chinese people have been wearing masks, okay? Chinese people have been wearing masks. It's like a cultural thing with them. Doesn't seem to stop, you know, it, 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 it will stop, it can stop them from spreading it when they cough, but it won't stop you from getting anything. Also, most of the masks that people are buying, guess what? It's made in China. So I wouldn't want to buy something from China to protect myself from that. That's just me. But um, yeah, definitely take a look at the links that I post below on my YouTube video. On this YouTube video, um, and uh, take care, take care of yourselves. Understand that you play a huge role in taking care of yourself. Understand that we can never fully box ourselves in and protect ourselves from infectious disease. It's always going to be wherever you know. We can always be exposed to it. We never know. This is why we have to always be ready. This is why taking care of yourself is not, you don't want to wait till there's a pandemic to say, oh, let me take care of myself. No, you need to be doing that shit every day because you never know when there's going to be an outbreak of something. We don't, we don't hear about that until people die. Okay? So take care of people. Make sure to listen to my videos. Look at the videos I post below. Follow me on YouTube and Instagram. YouTube, The Body Scientist 81. Instagram, The Underscore Body Underscore Scientist. And I hope... You and your family um, all stays well. And I'm always available for one-on-one -on -one consultations, training sessions. If you want to talk to me about that, email me directly at thebodyscientist81 at gmail.com. And be great, people. Bye.